Well, the reason I think anger resonates with um, with fans who, who saw the first film was, in, well, first of all, I have to actually say that I don't, it, 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 I was kind of stunned that it did, because you don't expect that to be, it's not the cute, cuddly character, you know, it's not like the, the little soft plush, you go, oh, oh, my anger, it's so sweet. Um, but it, the reaction was really something that I didn't expect, and that I, I think it just has to do, I think a lot of it has to do with the flames coming out of his head. I really do. I think the fact that they visualized it so that a kid could really understand it, that's really the key to it. And the kids, I think, really, uh, you know, uh, locked into that. But I think what's new about um, uh, Anger in Inside Out 2 is the fact that he's, uh, He's developing, and I hate to use this word, a, a bit of a heart. Um, but he's kind of coming to grips with actually um, having a certain amount of respect and uh, and relying on, and also uh, feeling a kinship with the other emotions, which he, he he didn't have in the in the first one. The character I voice in Inside Out Two, uh, his name is only known by embarrassment. And uh, the name says it all. He is embarrassed and insecure and kind of in fear of speaking up and uh, or of doing much of anything. So kind of hallmarked by timidity. And, uh, and it's not until later in the film that he learns that sometimes there is a time to both act and take action and to even speak up. I love the bond between... Uh, Phyllis and I and the characters of sadness and embarrassment. I, I think they're both so funny in their own unique ways and what they share is kind of this um, sort of bleak timidity and, and sort of uh, th this, this blankness where they're kind of looking at the rest of the world and, and just reacting to what, what's going to happen, where do I fit into all this, how do I go unscathed or unseen. And, uh, and in that moment, toward the end of the film, they really are able to see each other and value each other enough to team up and, and help out Riley. Anxiety uh, really is the, uh, it, it, it really is, it, it is the one that really makes everything crazy in this film. I mean, the, the touch of anxiety makes, it, it explodes all of the other Every, every, all the other emotions kind of uh, are touched by anxiety. It's, it doesn't, anxiety doesn't miss any one of them uh, and is, and really kind of, um, you know, it's like the, it's like you, it's the one that shows up at the party you didn't want to have come. You go, really? Who invited her? And just like real anxiety in real life, the anxiety can just take over and mute everything yeah. else and become dominant. You know? Yeah. I think fans should see Inside Out too because we we I say we I had very little to do with oh, it. Stop. We honor dynamo force in this dynamo. We honored the first <laughs> movie. I feel like this is one of those sequels, just like Toy Story two, where it feels like. They nailed the tonality and they built upon the old story and made something fresh but familiar. And I think people are going to fall in love with the new characters and then just be so delighted and relieved to laugh and feel along with the old characters. My childhood around the age of Riley, that 12 to 14-ish zone, was, uh, was very charmed. A lot of opportunities to be creative, a lot of friends and and I felt like the world was my oyster at that time. You know, you're unjaded and you're optimistic and you're excited. Yeah, I, I think my my time was, was 12 to 14 was, uh, I, I adjusted from, the, the whole period was an adjustment until I got to being 14. Everything in between was a mess. <laughs> I think it's important to talk about our emotions in an accessible way. It, it is, Somewhat for the uh, the adults in this country who basically uh, live without any um, sense of what, uh, of, without any real uh, help in terms of mental health. I mean, it's you know it's vital for them, and it's really even more vital for the, it's, 
it, it, for the kids who really need, it gives them a language to speak about how they feel. And my generation did not have that language, and you can see how it's ended up for us. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think it is important to talk about emotions in an accessible way, and, the, and this film does such an expert job of that by entertaining you while educating you and exposing you to um, what those emotions mean and what the ramifications are. I once heard a therapist say, you can't heal what you can't name. And so, uh, similar to what Lewis was saying, this gives words and even uh, characterized depictions for children of all ages to be able to look at something and go, oh, that's what that is. I think I felt that. Well, now let me explore that. And, and those conversations can be really healing, I think. Well, it's, the working with the filmmakers at Pixar is uh, one of the great uh, joys that I've, I've ever had in my uh, creative life. I mean, uh, I wouldn't even, you know, or uh, interpretive life, since they were the creators. It's, it's, it's been remarkable. Uh, everything they said, they have a humility that you don't see out here. In, you don't see it in LA. You, don't, you, you, you rarely see it in the business. Uh, about their work, I think it, it informs their work because they, they, it's not like they come in and go, you know, you're gonna, they really are open. They, they have a profound respect for the people they choose to work with. Un, unusual in this business. Um, and uh, they really uh, have taken the art of animation to another level. Yeah. And it's, it, you know, I couldn't be happier to be a part of it. And then I get to meet people like him. Yeah, working with the Pixar family, I say family because that's kind of what it feels like. It feels like a bunch of people that actually love and care about each other and are working together to make something really special. Um, uh, I've been a fan for such a long time. And to see the process, you know, what they call peeking behind the curtain or watching them make the, the sausage, it was, it was actually really inspiring and fun. And it made me think, wow, there are really healthy workplaces, <laughs> albeit I'm sure difficult. I'm sure the hours and things they put in are exhaustive, but, um, but you also get a product like this and it's like, wow, it was worth all the hard work and the energy they put into it. And, uh, and you get to meet people like Amy Poehler. <laughs> Louis Black, too. Louis Black, too. <laughs>